Jan Moore, all we want is to share in the joy of baby Sussex as we near 50 days since Meghan last made a public appearance. Almost 50 days. That is how long it has been since the Duchess of Sussex has appeared in public. Since then, a news embargo means nothing emerged about her whereabouts or welfare. One presumes she spent her time at Frogmore Cottage, Mother Doria by her side, preparing for this wonderful event that might have already happened. Radio DJ Chris Evans has hinted that baby Sussex is already here. Perhaps the news will be released by the time you read this, in which case let joy and glad tidings abound. Yet as the weeks rolled on through spring, the Prince Harry-led lockdown that accompanied this royal birth has left a niggling feeling of awkwardness. Where do we all go from here? Of course, the arrival of a baby is a moment of private, blazing joy for all parents. Yet for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, there is a fine line between enjoying total privacy and fulfilling their royal obligations. In April, they infamously put out a statement saying that they had taken a personal decision to keep the plans around the arrival of their baby private. All would be revealed once they have had an opportunity to celebrate privately as a new family. Their concerns and desires are understandable in the modern fishbowl world, especially as Meghan is an older, first-time mother in a very different role. However, as time marches on, is it wrong of me to think that this blanket secrecy and exclusive strategy of theirs is beginning to look a bit off? Is the baby here yet, is it not? Has the stork delivered, or is it in a holding pattern over Windsor? Is it upon us like a storm or a second coming or a new single from Taylor Swift? Or is it not? All this confected mystery is seen as a groundbreaking piece of woke feminism on the Duchess's part, but only by those who don't understand the British monarchy or the singular and symbiotic relationship it has with the British public. I'm talking about people like Oprah Winfrey, who has been friends with Meghan for about five minutes and who is now an expert when it comes to commenting on royal and constitutional matters. Perhaps she could be the new Buckingham Palace spokeswoman? She's certainly got the confidence and the broadcasting skills. This week on American TV, Oprah has been burbling on yet again about how she's proud of Meghan for keeping the birth private. The way she goes on. It is such an affront. It's as if the British public were demanding cameras be allowed in the Frogmore bedchamber perhaps with a live-action Dimbleby commentary on the side. And it is hard not to laugh when Oprah claims the Duchess of Sussex is going to start her family in a different way than it's been done for more than a thousand years. Prithee, forsooth my good lady Oprah! And wilt thou have a pinch of snuff to season thy baby bounded ash? She clearly doesn't realize that until very recently, home secretaries attended royal births, including the Queen's. The last time was in 1936 for the birth of the Queen's cousin, Princess Alexandra but the presence of a government minister is no longer required. You see, Oprah, we have already moved into the modern world, thanks all the same for your input. And while I wish Harry and Meghan nothing but the best, it is not really fair to suggest the arrival of baby Sussex is nobody's business but theirs. For they are not Hollywood celebrities, they are Windsor celebrities and there is a big difference. The birth of a new member of the royal family is our business, actually. British people have long invested emotionally and financially into this institution. And whatever he might think, Prince Harry cannot escape the unspoken contract the royal family has with the British public, or ignore the important fact that the monarchy's survival is predicated on their support and affection. And I'm afraid to say that means allowing the masses into the main events of their lives, even if that is to a degree they find distasteful. Everyone has been so understanding about this young couple, as they struggle to find a practical new way of being modern royals that melds with their Soho house lifestyle. However, even the most ardent royalists don't want to feel that their honest and warm interest in the Windsors and their bouncing new Windsor babies is somehow wrong or unwanted or tainted. Harry and Meghan tamper with that golden pond of goodwill at their peril. For while being a member of the royal family might be a drag, we all know it has its many benefits, too. Chiefly, a global platform upon which to launch their favorite charities and pet causes, beautiful homes in which to live, and access to the £80 million sovereign grant. If the Sussexes still decide the cost of being royal is simply too high, 
they can always leave the fold and live their lives in glorious, undisturbed privacy forevermore. Nobody wants that, perhaps least of all them. Few doubt the stresses of dukedom and accompanying duchess constraints, but let's be honest, the reality of Harry and Meghan's situation is that they are victors in life's lottery, not victims. Putting up with the odd awkward photo shoot and the fond interest of a nation is a small price for all the love and affection that will come surging their way in return. In the meantime, a new baby. How absolutely wonderful. Please let us share in that joy. Despite frenzied speculation that the baby is already here, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have not yet become parents, according to palace sources. Meghan previously told well-wishers that her due date was the end of April or early May, but with no sign of baby Sussex, rumors are flying that she has already given birth in secret. Speculation went into overdrive yesterday after Prince Harry announced a trip to the Netherlands next week, meaning he could potentially miss the birth of his first child. This convinced royal fans that the baby was already here but sources are now categorically denying the speculation. Prince Harry will be in the Netherlands on May 8 and 9, despite the birth of his first child being imminent. His wife Meghan is due any day now and the trip could mean that Harry is either away for the birth or for the first few days of being a first-time father. The trip, combined with Chris Evans sensationally claiming live on air that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have already had their baby, left fans abuzz with excitement. However, palace sources have now dampened the rumors. The update comes after punters made an 11th-hour gamble on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex having a baby boy. Bookmakers said bets are pouring in on Prince Harry and Meghan having a boy, with the odds down from 11 tenths to evens today, although a girl is still the favorite at 8 11. The favorite for the name with Ladbrokes is now a tie between Grace and Diana at 6-1, followed by Arthur and Elizabeth at 8-1 and Philip at 10-1. Further behind are Allegra. James and Alice at 12-1, and Victoria and Albert at 16-1. If the baby arrives today, they will be born on Princess Charlotte's fourth birthday. Meghan and the Duke of Sussex have said they will only announce news of the birth once they have had time to celebrate together as a new family. A Ladbrokes spokesman said, a baby girl has been the favorite since Harry and Meghan announced their pregnancy, however, it's now a little boy that we're seeing an influx of bets for. Time will soon tell which set of royal fans are on the money, but this last-minute gamble on a boy could prove to be a case of perfect timing. Yesterday, Buckingham Palace confirmed that Prince Harry would undertake an official visit to the country next Wednesday and Thursday, starting off in Amsterdam. This will be followed by a trip to The Hague to launch the one-year countdown to the Invictus Games, his Paralympic-style event for injured service personnel. The Duchess of Sussex is expecting any day now, with sources telling the Daily Mail that the baby was due last weekend. It is understood that the Netherlands visit has been penciled in since last year but aides had not announced it due to the potential clash with the birth. Sources have said the prince is desperately keen to attend the Invictus launch. But if Meghan hasn't given birth by the middle of next week, or if the baby has only just been born, then he would reluctantly cancel. If the seventh in line to the throne did arrive before the weekend however, it is likely that Harry would go. Meghan has her mother, Doria Ragland, staying with them at Frogmore House in Windsor, so will be in good hands if he does fly out. Friends are said to be queuing up to visit but may have to postpone due to what has been dubbed the Sussex standby.